So if you were actually going to try and become Batman, there's a few things that would prevent that from working. It's wholly impractical. But one of the main things is probably that bad knee. You keep putting your ankle out. Whatever the case, most of us have a couple of injuries that we've picked up along the way. In The Dark Knight, Frank Miller's graphic novel, we see an older Batman who's retired following the death of his Robin. Of course, he's dragged back into action. He takes back to the streets and kicks some serious ass. The question is, how feasible, how realistic is this? How can we train in such a way to have longevity so that we can keep jumping and lifting and throwing and sprinting even as we get older? A lot of us think that age is inevitable and that we are going to lose the ability to move and to do all the things we love. But I personally don't believe that to be the case. So in this video, we're gonna discuss how to train like the Dark Knight. So our nemesis here, the enemy is someone far more insidious than the Joker or Mr. Freeze. The evolutionary shadow describes the fact that once you reach a certain age, you've either procreated or you haven't. And as far as evolution is concerned, that's it. You've either passed on your genes or you haven't. And what happens after that point has no impact on future evolution of the species. Therefore, after a certain age, we are allowed to just fall apart. And this isn't going to factor into our overall survival as far as natural selection is concerned. That's why we see a lot of the degradation and the breakdown that we're dealing with here. But again, fortunately, the body is built in such a way that there are methods we can use to combat this and slow it down. I'm actually filming today at a gym called First for Fitness in Bicester, which is run by Paul Clutterbuck, and he's very kindly let us film here. And he's going to show us a move or two as well whilst we're here. I'm also here with Liam Ellis, uh, parkour extraordinaire. You've seen him on this channel before. He's also a fantastic videographer. And if you guys should need any videography, he is available, Perception Media. I'll put a link in the description down below. And he too is going to be demoing a few moves during this video. So what's going on here? Well, for starters, of course, we have sarcopenia. Once you reach a certain age, it's hard to put on muscle mass and they're not gonna be as big. However, we also have dynopenia. This is the fact that your muscles are less strong. And actually, the dynopenia is greater than the sarcopenia alone would suggest. That is to say that the muscles are still big enough to be stronger than they actually are, which means we know there's some other stuff going on here. This likely includes such things as tendons. Your tendons probably get weaker and more compliant, which we'll talk about in a moment, as well as neural drive, your neural drive decreases, it's harder for you to recruit those muscle fibers and exert as much force. At the same time, your bone density decreases. Resorption starts to outpace formation, meaning in other words that you're losing bone density faster than you're able to rebuild it. So they become weaker, you're more likely to break your bones. Of course, testosterone falls. This is gonna make you less anabolic, makes it harder to recover. And as we age, of course, we also see a reduction in quality and quantity of mitochondria. Mitochondria, of course, being the power plants of the cell, they provide us with energy and as these deplete, we become far less energetic and more tired. And then you have DNA damage over time. Telomeres exist at the end of your DNA strands. Every time a cell reproduces and your DNA is copied, you lose a little bit of that telomere. Telomeres act as buffers. And once they're gone, you start to eat into your actual DNA. And this is where you start to see all kinds of things go wrong, some of the visible signs of aging. At the same time, of course, we just have regular wear and tear. The longer you're alive, the more accidents you're likely to have the more likely you are to twist an ankle too badly. And these sorts of things build up over time, especially if we don't treat them properly at the time, which is again, something we're gonna talk about in a moment. And even your brain function starts to decline as you get older. As we know, you'll lose fluid intelligence, which is your ability to think quickly on the spot. Although crystallized intelligence, that is knowledge, actually remains. At the same time, brain plasticity will often be reduced. Now we used to think that brain plasticity stopped entirely after a certain age. However, we now know that it is still possible to grow new neural connections and even birth new brain cells late into our older age. The problem is, once again, that our lifestyles often don't support this. Good news is that whilst we do see reduced brain plasticity, there are lifestyle factors that play a role in this and we can increase it. And one of the most important ways to increase brain plasticity is to learn more. The more you learn, the more you keep trying new things, the more you produce those neurotransmitters and the more plastic your brain remains. And this explains so much about why we lose mental sharpness and lose movement ability as we get older. Babies have slightly different brains. They go through a lot of pruning. But in general, when you're learning new things, when you're first born, when you're very young, everything is new. Even your ability to see contrast is something that's foreign, alien to your brain. So is there any surprise that your brain is absolutely awash with these chemicals that make learning so easy for children? Then as we get older, we continue to learn a lot. Children, of course, have to learn more social skills. They learn things at school. They might start a new hobby or a class. And this continues even as we're teenagers and into young adulthood. We might learn to drive, we learn new jobs, have new relationships, move to different parts of the world. 
As you get older still, things start to slow down. You've learned to drive. This is no longer that novel for your brain. You've found a job that you like and you go to that workplace every single day and do pretty much the same thing. In the evenings, you come home and relax on the sofa because you're feeling tired, partly due to that lack of BDNF, etc. And we just learn less and less. Compounding this then is any aches and pains, any injuries that make it harder for us to go out and do new things. We become more tired. And for all these reasons, the brain becomes significantly less plastic. We hear things like, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. When it comes to learning new things, one of your best options is Skillshare, which also just so happens to be today's sponsor. Skillshare is a platform for learning that has thousands of classes and members across 150 countries. What makes Skillshare different though, is that these classes are made by members of the community, making this a truly crowdsourced learning experience for the budding poly. I actually have been using Skillshare myself for years, and I used it for example to learn how to make 3D models in a combination of Blender and Unity and to animate them. So if you like any of the CGI that you've seen on this channel, that's actually how I made it. I even made a few 3D prints like this, a great class to get started with is Your First Day in Blender 3D from Southern Shotty 3D. Skillshare is completely ad-free, there are new premium classes every week, and the entire back catalogue is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese and German. So if you're interested in levelling up your learning, then check out Skillshare using the link below. And the first 1,000 people to use the link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, thanks to you guys for watching, and on with the show. And in terms of learning, I'm not just talking about sitting in front of a book and reading. The best kind of learning for the brain is moving in 3D space. This creates so much information for the brain, from the proprioceptors to the equilibrioceptors to your vision. So much information coming at the brain all at once and you having to adjust your movement accordingly. This fills the brain awash with brain plasticity enhancing chemicals. And as a result, if you keep doing this, you'll keep your brain healthy and young. So learn new skills, whether it's parkour, whether it's rings, whether it's hand balancing, whether it's running, keep learning new things, keep moving your body in new ways, and you'll keep your brain active and young as well as your body. At the same time, moving in more ways and more vectors is also really good for your fascia, the connective tissue that surrounds the muscles and joints. If you look at the work of Thomas Myers, his anatomy trains, he explains how if you train only using the same linear movements all the time, you can strengthen specific lines of fascia whilst the neighbouring areas can become brittle and weaker. The wider variety of movements you use, the more resilient you'll be, the more mobile. The thing is, far too often people act as though we have a set number of joint uses, like you can wear out your knees or your elbows. Obviously, the body doesn't work like that, and more often what we think of as overuse injuries or you know, just wear and tear is actually either under recovery or it can be imbalance. That is to say that you might have trained one side of your body too much and not the other. Very often, for example, we can see elbow issues if you do a lot of curls because you're using your forearm flexors and not the extensors. For this reason, you need a wide variety of movements once again. In general though, strength training, resistance training is fantastic, not only for preventing and slowing down sarcopenia, much older people can still experience hypertrophy. It also builds bone density. Curling weights or squatting is a fantastic way to build stronger bones, reduce the likelihood of osteoporosis and prevent breaks and other issues. Of course, it's also strengthening the tendons. In lieu of adding resistance, impact can have a similar effect for the bones. For example, studies show that sprinting builds stronger bones than does jogging. Now, of course, as you're getting older and picking up injuries, you don't just start sprinting and leaping off of boxes and therefore you're gonna to wanna to ease into this slowly. But notice how a lot of this is the stuff that we've been told not to do, that we assume we shouldn't do as we get older. Truth is, this is the very stuff in the right dose that prevents you from injuring yourself. What also decreases as you age is neural drive, your ability to recruit muscle fiber. However, this doesn't start to decline until the age of 55. Pro tip, if you're gonna use medicine balls you're not familiar with, make sure you know just how much they bounce before you slam them on the ground. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so if you're an expert martial artist, you've been training your entire life, you're gonna maintain a lot of that power, even as you get older, because you have the perfect technique and you can recruit the muscle fiber. This might contribute to what we call old man strength, because you're continuing to improve those neural pathways as you get older and older, thereby increasing your strength up to this age of about 55. And then of course, it doesn't just immediately drop off. This goes double for laborers and anyone who uses particular movement patterns very often. If you've ever felt the grip of your dad when you were a kid, it probably felt like a vice. This might be partly why. 
However, past this age of 55, we do start to see a drop off. We also start to see greater activation of the antagonist muscles. In other words, your movements become slightly less coordinated and you slow yourself down. In terms of mitochondria, the best thing you can do to hang on to them as long as possible is to incorporate a little bit of high intensity interval training into your workouts. High intensity interval training has been called by some the fountain of youth because of its ability to replenish mitochondria, keep them there, keep them healthy. Just remember that mitochondrial density can be domain specific. That is to say that just because you're sprinting doesn't mean your arms aren't losing mitochondria. So get a wide range of different metabolic finishes to incorporate into your training. And the missing piece of the puzzle might be tendon strength, because of course, tendon injuries become more likely as we get older. And according to the most recent research, we do indeed not only become more likely to tear a tendon, they also become more compliant. And in this case, that's not a good thing. We're not talking about flexibility here. We're talking about slack, so that when you try and exert force on a joint, it actually takes longer for the muscle to transfer that force to the joint, because it's like pulling on a rope rather than a steel cable. Our tendons are capable of withstanding a lot more pressure and force than are our muscles. And so one of the best ways to train for stronger tendons is to apply a lot of resistance and use a wider range of motion. However, this is something we're gonna talk about in a second. If you're someone who currently is already experiencing tendon issues, if they're not as strong as they could be, then instead we wanna focus on getting blood supply to the area. We know that tendons have limited blood supply compared to muscles and they take longer to respond to training. So you wanna use lots of high repetition pump work to try and strengthen them as much as possible. And it's talked a lot about by Keegan Smith. Check out his YouTube channel, The ATG Coach. He discusses short range strength and long range strength. And short range strength is what we're interested in first, because this means using shorter range of motion where the muscle is shorter in order to pump lots of blood. We're gonna use lighter resistance, higher rep ranges, and we're going to fill those tendons with blood in order to help encourage them to recover and to get stronger so they don't get hurt in the first place. So for this, you can use lots of movements that have a short range of motion or that are causing almost muscle cramp where they're in that shorter range, even like an L-sit or a V-sit where you're cramping the muscle up together. At the same time, once you've built that resilience, the ATG group, they then move on to movements that have a much longer range of motion. Right. So this is an ATG pull down, a very good exercise to get full range of motion, full lengthening of the lats at the back there, which can actually work towards doing your full range pull up, pulling it into your chest. So you're gonna select your weight, sit on the floor. <coughs> Back hand down, let that pull you all the way up. And as you pull down, pull it right into your chest and then control all the way back up again. Again, getting that full lengthening in the lats. Pull all the way down, control all the way back up again. And this is designed to increase the amount of tension on the connective tissue because now you're not only adding the amount of resistance that your muscle is capable of exerting, but also the additional momentum and gravity that is caused by going to that full extreme range. Of course, we don't need to go to this point if we're just trying to age gracefully, but if we were Batman and we're trying to get the very most of our tendons in old age, this might be one way to go. So thanks a ton for watching this video, guys. If you liked it, then please leave a like and share it around. That helps me out immensely. If you enjoy this kind of training that focuses not just on strength and aesthetics, but on things like mobility, brain function, endurance, then you'll enjoy my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training 2.0, the Protein Performance System. That also comes with over two hours of instructional video. You can check that out in the link in the description down below. Either way, thank you so much for watching this one, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.